Okay, I think it's time. We just have ourselves a cup of coffee. And we run through my favorite iPhone apps that I use every single day. Now, what's the context here? I am founder of Fuji, an Apple IT company that helps organizations adopt and manage Apple products. So not only am I using my iPhone constantly, but I'm advising companies on which apps to use in their industry. I'm also listening to them as they show me different apps in different industries. And I'm also listening to our Fuji team here. We've all been using the iPhone since day one, and these next 12 apps have proven themselves useful time and time again through multiple iOS releases. So these apps help me as a CEO, as a consultant, as a father, and as a husband. Now, two quick things. I'm gonna have all of the links to each of the apps down below in the description. And I'm also just gonna give a quick overview over each of these apps. I'm not gonna get into too many details. So if you do have questions, let me know in the comments. Um, I'll be going through all of them and I'm happy to help. Okay, for podcasts, my go-to app is Overcast. I've been using this for years. First and foremost, it is just a straightforward design. If you're still using the Apple Podcasts app, I highly recommend you check out Overcast. The other killer feature for me is a feature called Smart Speed. And what Smart Speed does is it basically finds all the gaps in the pauses that naturally occur in our speaking and it fast forwards through all of those pauses without making the speech speed up. So just by having Smart Speed turned on, you can get about a 15% speed gain on running through your podcasts. Of course, it has all the standard features that any podcast app should have, and it's just got a straightforward design. So check it out. Now, my app of choice for group texting is Group Me. Now, if we all have a circle of friends that use iPhones, it's totally fine to just use iMessage. But we all have a few groups of people where not everyone has the same brand of device, whether that's your own family or sometimes a neighborhood group, church group, sports team, something like that. And you guys that are watching this video know that if one person forgets to leave another person out of that group text, all hell breaks loose when it comes to managing those conversation threads. So with an app like GroupMe, it's a super simple hybrid app that allows everyone to just easily talk to each other, share links, uh, videos, and pictures. And what I especially love about this is for those couple of people that don't want to install an app, GroupMe will actually assign your, your group uh, a unique phone number. So you can actually, one person can actually just SMS uh, to that group and still be part of the conversation. Best of all, it's free. All right, number three is Solver. I spent an entire episode talking about this calculator app. Yes, it's a calculator, but it is the coolest calculator. So check out the episode. In short, it allows you to save all of your calculations, uh, which is, makes it so easy when you are working on a little mini task or project to be able to go back to a calculation. And it also parses out uh, human text from numbers. So it's just much easier to label your units as you're doing these calculations. So check out Solver. Guys, how much money have you spent on weather apps? I don't wanna know how much money I've spent on weather apps, but out of all of them, Weatherline is my favorite. It's a bit of a different design, and that's because their premise is that it's easier to just digest numerical data when it's on a line graph. So in my opinion, it just makes it super easy when I'm looking at today's forecast or maybe the next week to just see a little line graph of where the temperatures are going to be and it also uh, uses the dark sky data to get insanely accurate uh, precipitation forecasts for the next hour so down to the minute it'll let you know when drizzle is going to start when snow or rain is going to start and stop which becomes very useful especially if you live in a place with a lot of traffic for Twitter, I use Tweetbot. We won't spend a lot of time on this, but in my opinion, Tweetbot is just the OG Twitter app the way Twitter should be. It's got a linear timeline, not some algorithmic timeline that you know Twitter is showing you what you think you want to see. So it keeps all my tweets nice uh, in chronological order, and it just got a straightforward design and it's full feature. Okay, the next app is security related because I use this app about 20 times a day, and it has to do with two-factor authentication. Now, let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to spend a whole episode on just 
the, the best practices for two-factor authentication. You should be enabling two-factor authentication for as many online services as you can. And my favorite app to manage those uh, two-factor codes is Authy. Now, if you're still using your cell phone number to get those uh, six-digit codes texted to you, you're actually leaving yourself open to an exploit. Uh, hackers have been known to actually replicate your SIM card so that they can receive your text messages. So that's why I recommend using an app to manage all of those authentication codes. The killer feature for Authy, besides its great design, is that you can create an account and sync those um, apps that you authenticate through Authy to another device. So I've got Authy on my iPhone, iPad, and Mac. Of course, it works on Android and Windows. So that if I do lose my iPhone, then I'm not locked out of all of my services because I can still go to my Mac to get those two-factor codes. Number seven is one password. Have we talked about one password enough? No, I don't think we have because it is a fantastic app. First and foremost, it's got great design. And when I say design, I'm not just saying that it looks beautiful, but it's the way that it works, the way that everything's laid out. It's extremely thoughtful, uh, no matter what platform you're using it on. It works on Android, Chrome OS, Windows, Mac, iPhone. Basically, it works for every OS and every browser out there. Now, it's especially useful in a team or company setting. This is what we use at Fuji to share passwords across the entire team. Um, and I also use it here uh, for my family with 1Password families. It makes it super easy so my wife uh, and, and my passwords are always synced up with each other. And heaven forbid something should ever happen to us, sorry to be a bit morbid, the other one of us has all of the password information for our accounts. If you use the link in the description for 1Password, you'll get three free months of 1Password families. The next is deliveries. I actually spent another episode entirely on deliveries, but it's basically my favorite package tracking app ever. If you haven't bought it yet, you're missing out on a gift of life. Okay, next is an app called Highball, and this is my favorite cocktail recipe app because life is too short to deal with hard to read cocktail recipes. They've got a great library of classic cocktails in there, but what I love about this app is that it makes it easy to create your own recipes that you might find elsewhere. So I've got my little library of my cocktails um, and you can share out these to friends or family really easily too. For note taking, I use Apple Notes. You know, why complicate a good thing? Apple has added so many features uh, to this app over the years, and it's so fast and reliable with its syncing and sharing features. I did an entire episode on my 10 favorite features of Apple Notes. And year over year, this is my favorite app for note taking. For Android users, check out Google Keep. In my opinion, that's a simple go-to app. Also has a lot of the same features as Apple Notes like sharing as well. My go-to app for calendaring is Fantastical. Now, I've already mentioned this app in my other episode where I touched on my favorite Mac apps, um, but I also use it on the iPhone and iPad as well. Besides it just being a great design and really information dense, so there is fewer clicks to get to what I need to get to. Um, I really like how easy it is to create new events. It does uh, human language parsing, so you can just type in the details of your appointment right there in one field, and it pops it right in. All right, the last app that I use every single day on my iPhone is Things. This is my go-to app for task management, at least for personal use. For work use, we use Basecamp, which I won't get into in this episode, but for personal task management for my daily work uh, or maybe home tasks and projects. I've been using Things for years. It syncs to all of my devices. I actually mentioned this in my uh, top five apps for the Mac as well. And it's hard to describe just how good and thoughtful their design is. They've got a lot of drag and drop features um, and also complete Siri integration as well. So check out Things for task management. All right guys, so that covers my top apps that I use for my phone every single day. But I don't want it to stop there. Please let me know if you have other apps that you prefer over mine. As you know, this is a constant pursuit of the best tools and techniques, and that's why we're here. That's why we created this channel. So let me know if you have any thoughts or questions about these. I'm happy to help, and thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next week.